Guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? Huh? Anybody? Leslie, guess what today is? It's hump day. Woo woo! <laughs> Happy hump day, everybody. Uh, welcome to a Wednesday afternoon business therapy. Uh, this is the Do What Is Necessary live stream. It's coming to you from a beautiful, sunny Midwest Ohio, right here in Columbus, Ohio. So if anybody else is tuning in from the OH, uh, drop that in the comments. Let me know that you're here and let me know that you can hear me okay before we get into uh, inviting our guest onto the show today because we're going to have lots of fun. Uh, this is going to be loads of fun. But if you're tuning in, let me know where you're tuning in from as well. I always like to see where people are watching the show from. Um, and as you'll see, we'll get a global audience today, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, we've been doing this show for uh, over a year and a half now. It's been an absolutely phenomenal response, and it's great from people like Robert Gibbons, uh, who supports the show week after week. Uh, happy to have you back, my friend. Uh, from across the pond, I know it's evening time for you, and you're probably kicking back with a cold one. But if this is Wednesday afternoon for you, and you're still on the East Coast here in the States, um, welcome to the show. But let me know, too, uh, one more thing. Uh, let me know if this is the first time that you're catching the show as well. Um, I'm always t curious to see who, who watches the show for the first time. And as you can see, Robert's been here for a while. And he is actually kicking back from planet Earth. Uh, we appreciate you chiming in, Robert. So uh, we do have Hank Jensen from Holland on the program today. So welcome, Hank. We appreciate having you. Um, but yeah, we got a cool subject today. So if this is your first time catching out the show, if you're watching this on the replay, uh, my name is Andrew Moon. I run a company called Orange Nomad, and I help turn hustling entrepreneurs into calm, unstoppable CEOs. And this is the Do What Is Necessary live stream, and this is probably not what you're thinking. This live stream celebrates a different way of life. We push aside that hustle and grind, all that work your face, uh, norm business norms that we have out there uh, but this is about creating a calm life i'm about in business in your personal life i'm all about helping create calm businesses and that's what i'm dedicated to so as you can see if you probably if you're catching the show for the first time too um you will get a heavy dose of orange today as well um i finally picked up my orange amp t-shirt found that in a guitar store the other day um so I'm super psyched uh, to have finally have that. So, all right. So Hank says he's here for the first time. Again, welcome, 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 Hank. Uh, love the first time viewers. Anna Gill, another rock star, fellow live streamer, um, building blocks. Um, happy to have you on the show, catching out. I think this is your first time catching the show with us as well. Uh, so we appreciate having you on the show is today as well. Daniel Lamas. Repeat guests from Mexico City. So thanks, Daniel, for checking the show out today as well. So obviously everybody can see and hear me okay, so that's awesome. So we got the, the technical stuff out of the way. Um, but I did want to cover a couple things before I invite our guest on. Um, we picked up a new sponsor this week, and many of you may uh, be familiar with the Tech Tribe. Uh, but the good folks over at the Tech Tribe, Nigel Moore has agreed to sponsor the show uh, going forward, and I'm super, super psyched about that. So if you're looking for an IT community to be a part of, um, Nigel has built a, an incredible community over on the Tech Tribe, and he's negotiated a, a sponsor in the show. He's given you 40% off of your first month membership. It's only 49 bucks, um, and the resources and training and the community that you're going to get by uh, joining the Tech Tribe. I can't say enough good things about Nigel and his team. What a bunch of rock stars. Uh, but, we, yeah, we appreciate having them be an official sponsor going forward. So happy to have that. So Anna says, yep, her, her first time. So thank you so much, Anna. And I welcome any critique and feedback from you as well because the gentleman I'm bringing on as our guest today uh, was also at Leap Into Live so we're going to talk about live streaming. We're going to talk about, we're going to nerd out too, because we're going to talk about some geek stuff as well. All right. Without further ado, help me welcome to the show, my good friend, Chris Tim, coming to you from the UK today. So Tim, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, glad to have you. And he's a fellow lover of orange too, as you can see. 
So that's kind of a prerequisite, I think, for being on the show. Is you gotta you have to like orange first off. So, but yeah, welcome welcome to the show, Chris. Can you hear me? Okay. Hey, yeah, thanks. I, I can, Andrew. Thanks, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, and uh, orange is the way to go, right? It's uh, um, it's it's a great color. Um, so everything about me is orange. And we were just talking actually about your um, your your awesome microphone and your your orange cable. Um, and uh, yeah, mine mine's exactly the same. So good 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 to have a fellow oranger around. I finally succumbed to the peer pressure. So Anna, you can tell Fulgens, um, I finally succumbed and bought myself the SM7B. Um, he actually messaged me. There's an orange pop filter cover for the SM7B as well. So that is actually on order. And I think that's coming from like the Netherlands as well, which is, there was like the only place to get an orange pop filter, but yes, sporting all kinds of orange today. So, all right, let's jump into our topic today. I know we've got a, a little bit, I've, I've gotten some controversy over the topic of the show today is why your tools are useless. And Chris and I are going to dig in to talk about that today. Most of our show uh, and our audience, it comes from a tech background. He and I both come from a tech background. Uh, but I figure for folks who don't know who you are, Chris, why don't you tell the, the audience a little bit about how you got started in the crazy business that is IT services? Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so like yourself and, and, and many others, I, um, I, I ran an MSP business an IT consulting business, um, and, uh, and I sold that business back in 2012. Um, and then I went to work at Autotask in the UK. So many of, um, your, your viewers, the listeners will know what Autotask is. It's a, um, you know, a, a business management platform for, for MSPs, for IT service providers. Uh, you know, I, I, I worked there for sort of five and a half years. Um, and then I went on to work at, uh, yeah, after Audit Tasks, I went on to then work um, as an independent consultant, specializing in helping MSPs to get the best out of Audit Tasks and out of their tools and um, and all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I've been around in the industry for uh, for a very long time. Yeah. So tell me, since you ran, you said you ran your own MSP for a while. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So what did you enjoy most? I, I always like to see what really drove people to get into the industry and start a business of their own uh, in the in the IT industry. So what did you enjoy most and what was your what kind of, you know, pushed you into to jumping into the IT space? <laughs> well, um, so I've kind of always been a techie, right? Right from right from, um, uh, you know, a teenager, always loved fiddling with computers, playing around with uh, with computers, remember back in the day of, of, of having a, um, you know, a Sinclair Spectrum, um, a BBC microcomputer. So, you know, cut my teeth on, on basic and, and really kind of got an enjoyment for, uh, for computers in, in those days. Um, and, and then, uh, kind of when I left school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do for a career. So I figured, you know what, it'd be fun to just kind of do something in it. Um, and, and that's what I did. So I started working in a company just doing um you know desktop support computer support like like most of us i got fed up with with working for a boss got fed up with kind of you know the 95 grind um and, and and i thought the grass would be greener on the other side right little did i know that actually running an msp business is a lot more difficult than working for a boss and a and, and you work a lot longer hours than 95 but um that was kind of what got me into to being an msp and running an msp business just because you know i enjoyed the technical side i enjoyed helping people. And I figured, I guess, like most people, you know, I, I, I could actually make a business out of this. So, um, yeah, so that's why I, I, I went and, and did that. We jump into it for the, for the geek stuff. Don't we, uh, we, we really get into messing around with tools and things. I think that's, that's really what drives a lot of us, uh, to get into that industry. It's just something that we all have a passion for. Uh, but if you, if just, I didn't mention at the beginning of the show, if you guys have questions for Chris or I, uh, pop those in the comments, but I did, we're trying out to some restream pairs this week. So we're actually broadcasting over on Chris's channels as well. So I wanted to welcome the viewers who are watching. I think you're broadcasting out to LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook as well, Chris. Yep. Yeah. So we just want to welcome those viewers, uh, who are catching a heavy dose of orange today, uh, for certain. But yeah, t let's talk about the tools and and kind of talk about where 
we have seen the MSP industry come, you know, in the last 18 months uh, since COVID started. What do you see as being the most pressing challenge for MSPs right now in this current environment and possibly going into the into the next, you know, quote unquote, normal? Mm. Um, that that's a great question, and you know, I think um, yeah, the industry's changed changed a lot. So certainly, you know, everyone's obviously working more remotely these days. Um, you know, I'm seeing a, a a lot of shift to people working from home. That brings a whole set of challenges of things like security and how to make sure that you know you're you're, you're locking down um, your, you know systems correctly. You've got things like two FA enabled, um, and and that's also meant that a lot more MSPs have to kind of really think about and and evaluate their tools you know those who might not have had rmm tools in in the past um i don't know why you wouldn't as a as an msp but you know there there are some who used to kind of um you know roll a truck on site every every time the customer called them you know and, I, and i'm seeing a huge shift in people actually starting to use those kinds of tools now so that they can actually remote into their customers and um you know and, and do the work working from home rather than having to kind of go on on site all the time. So I think there's been a, a huge shift into that. Certainly, um, and it's certainly got a lot, um, uh, a lot more of that since COVID. Um, but yeah, I did start seeing a lot of that kind of happening just um, before COVID as well. So you know, let's let's kind of talk about that. Is have you've we've obviously seen a dramatic shift in the industry going from offices to the work from home. And we've obviously seen that's, I don't, the Pandora's box was open and I don't think we'll ever go back to being all office uh, environment across any industry, really. Um, but what do you see as being like the business challenges for MSPs right now? Because I've seen some where there's been explosive growth because, you know, businesses have closed or, you know, for whatever reason, we've seen a lot of attrition in uh, the IT industry over the last 18 months. And I don't, I don't think we're done yet. Um, we're, st I'm starting to see that uptick that I predicted at the beginning of the year happening now again. Um, but what would you say is the biggest challenge to those who are still running an MSP as far as day to day, as far as business, like how do they move forward business wise from here? Not just about the technical tools. Mm. I mean, certainly I think, um, uh, you know, MSPs need to, um, you know, like I said, I think need, need to kind of really focus on, on um, you know, offering security solutions to their customers, really kind of, um, uh, you know, working more with their customers around, um, uh, you know, shifting their customers more into kind of, um, uh, you know, working from home and having things like, you know, potentially people using home computers or, or, or something like that and how you can actually um, secure those and, and lock those down because I think that's going to be a, a um, you know, a big problem these days and certainly things like, um, uh, you know, wireless routers from, uh, you know, from the likes of BT or AT&T, those kind of things aren't secure. So I think there's a huge market there for, for MSPs as people are starting to work more from home to kind of, you know, look at solutions of how they can actually um uh you know address those those issues with uh, with a lot of their customers gotcha so now uh, like i said the title of our show let's talk about the tools right now and why i'm mean, like i said i threw that out there as being um you know why i think that our tools are useless um let's get the context around you and i talked before the the show why what renders our tools useless and one of them I found is, you know, in the, let's just talk about our PSA tour, professional service automation software. For those of you, uh, I know Anna probably has no idea what kind of uh, acronyms and <laughs> things that we're throwing out. Um, but let's talk about, you know, I think, you know, one of the challenges that I see when we do our coaching um, around that PSA, one, you know, those who have a PSA solution. So I think there's a crowd out there who are still looking for a PSA solution, but those who have it, one of the things that I see is it's like, is in the implementation, they're only using a tiny little piece of a PSA tool. Uh, so talk around the challenges that you see, cause you probably see this way more than I do dealing directly with PSA and RMM tools. Um, 
is is that what you're seeing? What do you see as being the number one challenge for those who are spending money on those types of tools right now? Mm. And that's a great question. And and I actually do see that all the time, right? Is people will buy a PSA tool. For those who don't know what PSA is, I guess I should probably explain that. Um, so PSA stands for Professional Services Automation. So it's a business management platform. So it really allows you to to manage and run your your entire business as a as an IT provider or a um, or, or an MSP. So you know it does more than just service desk. It's CRM and project management and billing and you know all of those kinds of things. And, and the thing or the area where I see a lot of MSPs go wrong in this space is they buy the PSA tool for the wrong reason. So you know a lot of people will kind of look at a a PSA tool because they want a service desk. So they'll say, oh, you know, I need something to to so my customers can log tickets with me. So then they'll go ahead and they'll buy a PSA tool and they'll only ever use the service desk side of it. So, um, you, you know, and then they, they never implement any of the other parts of the system. They never put in the billing, they never do any of the, the CRM and opportunity management. Um, and, and when I take those kind of people on, you know, the first thing I say to them is, you've got the most expensive service desk in the world because if what you want is a service desk then go and buy a service desk solution because there's millions of them out there and quarter of the price that you're going to pay for a, a, a PSA tool. Um, you know, and, and equally, when you are going to buy a PSA tool, really think about, you know, what challenges do I have? And is this PSA tool going to solve all of those challenges, or at least is going to solve 80% of those challenges, because it'll never solve 100% of them. But, um, you know, and, and when I when I have those issues or when I've identified those issues, then kind of look for the PSA tool that's going to best fit your business and best fit uh, or best solve or fix those problems that you have, um, you know, and then implement it based on that. Don't just kind of implement it as a as a service desk or, or something along those lines. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's what I see. They're only using it for one tiny piece of it. So um, I don't want to welcome Fulgence yeah. to the show. He's a- fellow lover of orange so check out fulgens and anna that happen to be following the show so um i know linkedin has a networking tab now so most of our audience comes from linkedin um but click on the networking tab and connect with the people who are watching the show today um but anna and fulgens are tremendous just tremendous folks folks um go givers i've learned a ton watching their videos uh so definitely check them out so uh yeah. but yeah, I actually want to second that. I've, I've I've watched a lot of their stuff as well. Um, for anyone who's who's using kind of Ecamm Live, um, uh, you know they have a great channel over um at, on Ecamm. Um, so yeah, I I kind of watch their stuff all the time. So um, good that good that they're both on the um, on this live stream. Yeah, it's awesome. I was I was hoping to be at People of Video, uh, which was this past weekend. I know they did a ton. I follow their Instagram channel. So I've been I was living vicariously through LinkedIn or uh, Instagram over the weekend. Uh, watching that so uh, but let's get back to talking about like the 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 nuts and bolts of tools one of the other things that that I see that really renders any tool useless is is uh, around the money side of things Um, and I know that is like one of the most underutilized things with a PSA tool is controlling your money and doing billing and automating that yeah there we go as he got a nice graphic um So talk to that, like, what do you see as being, what, like, why do people not do that? Like, when I went from Autotask to ConnectWise, that is the very first thing I set up, is the billing, is how do we track time, how do we track it against an agreement to make sure that the agreement is profitable, and how do I get my money? And I still do coaching where, you know, folks are been in business for five, six, seven years and aren't automating their accounting functions. And like, to me, that's like the easiest thing to do out of a PSA tool. Um, but why do you think that that is a challenge? Like why, what, what do you think stops people from, from doing that, from implementing that portion of any tool? Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's a, a great question. It comes back to, to kind of what I said earlier on. And I think a lot of people, choose a PSA tool for the wrong reason. So a lot of the people that aren't setting it up as a, um, a you know, as a billing tool or, or doing their finances, um, uh, you know, an invoicing through a PSA tool is because they've chosen it typically for the wrong reason. So they've chosen it as a service desk 
and they either don't realize that it can do billing or they kind of know it can do it, but they're just not sure how to set it up. Um, you know, they don't understand kind of how to get the costs in there and how to get all the products and services that they're selling. So very often they just kind of keep doing that in um, in QuickBooks or Zero or whichever way they've they've been doing it and don't actually leverage the the, the PSA to do that. Um, you know, and and if if that happens, I mean, all you're doing is is you know, like we said earlier, you're just kind of throwing money away and you're leaving money on the table if you're not able to to bill your customers. Yeah, and it's like you know, for me, if you're going to grow, you're going to scale any business, not just an IT business. Like everything revolves around cash. I mean, cash is king, mm. and you know when when you have to chase, especially if it's one, two, or three person shop or one man band, like that is the first thing that I implement is is getting getting paid and knowing, you know. And I still see we were. Um, on a discussion yesterday over on the tech tribe, somebody who's just, you know, signed a client up and now it's a month into the services and he's trying to collect his first month's payment. And you're like, that's a challenge. You're not going to be able to continue to grow. You can't pay your bills for that month. If you can't collect mm -hmm. from a brand new client and granted things, you know, things happen, things get lost in the mail and all that. But I think there's some apprehension with MSPs around, you know, asking for the money and, and, and automating that where they feel, I don't know. I think that's the frustrating thing with the IT industry. We're looked down upon instead of we, we should be viewing it as an elevated position. And we are, um, and that, yeah, you're that, but, but you, do you see that too? Is there's a stigma around people asking for the sale and then asking for the money once they've actually delivered services. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and again, it's because people aren't running their, their billing through the PSA tool. So, you know, a lot of them don't really know when, a um, uh, you know, if the customer buys an extra service like an Office 365, they, they have no way to track that because they're not putting it into the PSA tool. Um, they're also not tracking the costs of, of the engineer. So they don't really know how much that, that work is costing. So it's, it's not just the, the fact that they're not actually um, billing their clients. It's also they don't know how much um that work is costing and whether those customers are profitable or not right yeah. because they have no way to to know that if they're not running that um that billing and 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 that profitability information through the psa tool and that only comes from from setting it up correctly and making sure that you have all of the costs including your engineer costs and all of that kind of stuff entered into the psa tool i mean it it literally blows my mind every single time when uh, when i see somebody doing this i mean i i literally get like this on every consulting call yeah and, and and to me that renders the tool useless because if you don't stay in business long enough the tool's going to irrelevant and like it doesn't matter what tool you choose like if you don't like that to me is number one like you mm. will not survive you will not grow you will not do anything if you can't be in business next month um yeah so for me, like yeah. that, that's part of where I wanted, you know, this conversation to go as is, is what it's not about the tool that we've got to get that through our head and be comfortable with that part of the business is asking for the money, getting the sales, sales and marketing. We're going to go off on a completely different tangent on that one. But I think there's still apprehension about people collecting the money when they provide services. And I think once we get over that, then, then the PSA tool actually works for you. Then, then the tools actually work for you, not the other way around. Um, so mm. where do you, where do you and, see it? Go ahead. No, and I was going to say, and I mean, and, and again, I think part of that apprehension is, is, you know, like I said, because there's, um, you know, people have no way to know whether the invoices that they're sending to customers are necessarily accurate. So a lot of people are kind of sending out an invoice and, you know, making up how much time they've they've actually spent on the customer and you know and a lot of time i i guess are getting you know concerned that there's going to be some kind of query on that invoice because it's it's either too high or too low or or whatever the case might be so so i think a lot of it comes from that as well hmm. yeah and it's just you know when you know people are 8 10 12 weeks from sending out invoices i think that that touches on that point there the customer doesn't know what that service was that you provided two months ago because you're now billing two months later for it. 
because you finally had enough time to breathe and get invoicing out. Um, so, you know, to me, you know, I think that if you're an MSP, if you're a new MSP, like that needs to be number one on your to-do list for any tool is you've got to get right with your money, get right with collecting the money. And then like Chris said, just being able to track the time, the resources, like the actual cost of providing that service. Um, that needs to be number one because it, like yeah. I said, it, it doesn't matter what, you know, what tool you pick out. If you don't do those things, you're dead in the water. And, and that's the biggest number one thing I see is people don't track engineer costs through their PSA. So even if they have set up the, um, you know, the billing and the contracts and, and, and what have you, um, they, they're not entering the, the cost of the engineer and, mm. and it surprises me you know, every day when I talk to MSPs that they don't realize that they actually should be putting the cost of the engineer into into the PSA tool. And, you know, I mean, after all, your engineers do cost you money and they are a, a cost to the business. So you need to be able to track that cost. You need to know how much that engineer or how much that work is costing you based on what you're, you're, you're paying that engineer. Yep. I'm going to throw uh, Ben's comment back up too. So he gets our cowbell for today. So automating the billing and payment collection makes it easier to ask for money and that needs to be standard operating procedure for msps for going for i mean chris how many vendors do you deal with where you have a credit card on file and they bill you every month automatically P pretty much all of them every single one and i don't know yeah. why you know we we are providing a very necessary service to businesses it's, it's imperative if they're going to continue to run that we get paid um, mm. and like, there should be no apprehension. Your customers are used to that, that being the, you know, standard operating procedure is that they, that everything's on automatic, automated payment. And we were doing that back in 2006, 2007, you know, when I ran my MSP, when we were first starting out, that was again, one of the first things that we did is automate it. So on the 18th of the mm. month, I processed invoices out of ConnectWise, and on the 28th, all of the credit cards and ACH money was pulled so that on the first of the month, I now had enough money to pay all of our bills, pay our techs and actually work on growing the business instead of chasing money. Um, and I, I, you know, I see that actually quite a lot over here. So, so we use direct debit similar to, to kind of ACH and there's a lot of, um, a lot of the MSPs I'm working with now have, um, certainly in the UK, um, uh, you, you know, have direct debits set up. So they'll have some kind of, of way of, of, of automating those payments for the customer every month. But the, the problem comes in actually generating those invoices through the PSA tool to get them into your, your billing platform so that they can go out and, and, you know, um, uh, what well, you can collect the money for them. So, um, so I think that's where, um, you know, it's, it's not so much a problem, I guess, of, of, automating the payments a lot of the problem comes from actually getting those invoices um getting those invoices generated yeah and it, and the thing of it is like i think that's even that like that's probably the easiest part of any software tool now like the the ease of getting that done um like it, like it was fairly easy it was very intuitive in doing that inside connect wise for me um and I think the complexity of the agreements that people have and text tracking time and all that is a completely different discussion. Um, but yeah, I, I think that I lost my train of thought on, on that one, but, but yeah, that, that mm -hmm. needs to be kind of a, you know, an SOP on getting, how do you collect money? Like, I think that, that if again, MSPs that have been mm -hmm. in business 10 years still aren't doing that. Um, yeah. I, I mean, and a lot of the PSA tools, certainly the, you know, the, the bigger ones and more advanced MS, MSP and PSA tools, um, uh, you know, have got that side kind of pretty much sorted out. It's, it's a matter of clicking a few buttons and, you know, running an approvals process and pushing the, the, the invoices through. So, um, you know, there's no reason why people shouldn't be doing that because it's a, it's a fairly straightforward process. And some of the newer PSA tools just automatically do that. So every, um, you know, every recurring invoice uh, that you have for your customers just automatically go out, um, go through to zero 
or QuickBooks or, or whatever, and that whole process is, is automated. Some of the older PSA tools, you know, it's still a manual process, but it's not a very onerous task. I mean, it's, you know, it's a few tick boxes and a, um, you know, and an approval and generate the invoice and, and it goes out of the system. So, yeah. And, and it's, I'm not sure if somebody's got their privacy settings set pretty high. So it's exactly what our LinkedIn users said. Show me the money. Um, so like I said, I think that that's the first part of the discussion I want to have today was just around like that part and getting comfortable with it. The tools can do that very easily and can do it in an automated fashion where we don't have to worry about it. So if you're not using that, that was, that would be you know, Chris and I's tip number one, like that fi fix that between now and the end of the year, please. Um, Absolutely. I mean, and ain't nobody got time for that. Right. I mean, nobody's got time to not use their tools properly, right? Yeah. And so that's what I'm talking about. I mean, we spend hundreds of dollars on, you know, we go out and choose these tools and we spend, you know, hours and hours and hours of research and then we go implement them and then we, we don't, you know, I don't know. I just, it, it's, it's, it's frustrating um, to see that when people are struggling um, when that is like the easiest thing to do. Um, and people don't want to set that up because they're afraid they're going to lose customers if, if they go back after the fact and do it. Uh, but don't be afraid of that. Like I've never lost a customer cause we went back and asked, Hey, we're going to, we need to, to eliminate some manual functions in our business. So we're going to automate our billing and here's an easy way to do that. Mm, absolutely. And you had just mentioned earlier on about kind of just tools in general in terms of, you know, people using all these tools and, and you know, not using them properly and, and, and losing money. And again, part of that, I think, is because in this industry, we're very much of, of a kind of a me too industry, right? So yep. people will, will buy and use a tool because everyone else is doing it, not because it's actually going to be of any benefit to their business. So, you know, they'll they'll go onto to forums like the Tech Tribe and, you know, and other forums and, and ask, you know, what's the best tool to use for this or what's the best tool to use for that? And um, and then they'll just go ahead and buy that tool without even actually realizing why they need it or what they need it for or how they're going to use it. So, um, you know, so I see that a lot. I see a lot yeah. of people just kind of, um, you know, just building up their stack of tools and then, you know, and, and like you say, then they're just putting their credit card in against those tools, getting billed for them every month. And six months down the line, they have absolutely no idea why they bought the tool or even why it's being billed for or or even the fact that it's being billed for. And they just keep plodding along like that month after month after month. So, yeah. So Ben Spector had a question for you, Chris. Uh, he said, what would you say this is the typical time taken to run the billing each month? that would be before versus after doing it properly in the PSA, what is the improvement your clients see? That's a great question, Ben. And um, so typically the, pro the, the the length of time it takes or the process, um, you know, when everything is working correctly is probably a maybe a 10, 15 minute um, uh, time frame to go from, um, you know, selecting everything that needs to be built, clicking a few boxes, getting that through to the billing and sending those invoices out. So you're probably talking about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and, and you asked about, you know, how long does it take before? So before I ran or when I ran my MSP business, before I actually put the PSA tool in, it used to take me almost, you know, an entire weekend to do my billing because, you know, I, I never had a proper system in place before the PSA. I used to, um, you know, get back on a on a Friday or get into the office on a Saturday, scratch my head, not know how long I spent. It was, you know, I used to have these sheets of paper and saying, you know, was this two hours or five hours? I couldn't even read my own handwriting. And I would just kind of make it up, but I would spend all weekend trying to figure this out. When I put a PSA tool in place, um, you, you know, I'd go in on the Saturday morning um, at, at nine o'clock and I'd be done by 9.30, all the billing would be done. Um, you know, once I put those those processes into place. So um, for most people, it's probably going to take them a good few days at least to to kind of, you know, get everything in order and make sure it's all correct inside the, the billing, especially if you manually doing things like your um, your Office 365 licenses and manually having to go in and, and key all of that stuff in because you've got to reconcile that against um, 
you know, the spreadsheet that you get from the, the supplier, all that kind of stuff. So that whole process can take a, a long time. But once you get it set up properly in the PSA tool, you know, you're, you're talking, you know, 15, 20 minutes tops to get it done. Yeah, that was the way it was for me. I had to, basically we had a weekly billing cycle on Friday afternoons. I would go through and process any invoices for you know, anything that fell outside of our agreements, um, you know, whether that's time or any miscellaneous materials that fell outside of our managed services, um, hardware, we got mo that money up front. Um, and again, that was all done. It was automated. Somebody orders equipment. We get the money up front. Um, we're not waiting on our money, but yeah, we, I would literally take probably again, so like you said, about 10 or 15 minutes on Friday afternoons. I had a standing recurring, task to do that and i would go through process the invoices send them out and run the auto charges and then like i said on the 18th it used to take me hours and hours and hours like yourself um uh, but it literally took less than 30 minutes to do all of our billing um you know just to go through and verify everything but i think that that's the simplification inside the tool that makes that job easier as well um is simplifying all those things with your agreements everything else can be automated and, and really easy, uh, in my opinion. So, yeah. uh, and, and most of the, sorry, I was going to say most of the tools, um, nowadays, you know, like, um, uh, tools that, that manage CSP, all those kind of things, those automate, um, the, the, the billing counts directly inside the PSA tool these days anyway. So, yep. um, there's still a lot of people that, that aren't using those though. So they'll still get those, you know those spreadsheets or or download from the the website whatever from from the vendor um and they'll manually sit and reconcile uh that that stuff every every month or, or every week whenever they do it but um you know there's there's so many things you can do now to just automate all of those processes to streamline your billing and and have it take 15 to 20 minutes exactly and and that's the thing too is i'll see somebody like the tools that you're talking about that automate like that one particular function, how to um, basically reconcile things like Office 365 licenses. So I'll, I'll see people that won't take on those solutions because they don't want to spend a hundred dollars to do it, but then they'll spend 60 or $70 uh -huh. on a month on like Hootsuite or some other social posting program. And I, and I was, I, I shake my head when I see that because I would rather take the hundred dollars invest it in something that speeds up me getting money than worry about posting stuff automatically on social media. Mm. Like that's yeah. not going to matter well, if you're not in business. So again, your tools are useless if you're not investing you're not, the money in the right place. Yeah. Or, or even worse, you know, they won't want to spend a hundred dollars on a tool that, that, that integrates, but you know, they, they're quite happy to let their, um, you know, their admin person sit for hours on end kind of can, you know, reconciling these things or, you know, sit for an entire weekend trying to figure out, you know, how, how many licenses they purchased on, you know, tech data or, or one of those sites. And, um, you know, they, they'll sit for hours doing that rather than spending a hundred bucks on a tool that will just do it for them, um, you know, automatically and just bring that stuff over into the PSA tool. So, um, yeah. again, like I say, you know, completely, completely blows my mind every time. <laughs> And so to to touch on the, the the latter half of Ben's question, what, what is the improvement your clients see? And for me, if I don't have to spend hours and hours and hours doing billing every month, I'm going to be doing something sales and marketing. So I'm going to be getting more customers. I'm going to be doing things like setting up SOPs. I'm going to be doing things that improve customer service. So, you know, for me, that was where I saw the direct benefit. I don't think <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I, I think, you know, to touch on that, I think this is Scotty Miller's, uh, he said it happens across all industries. I've got a cleaner and a decorator that I'm still waiting on for an invoice from over a month. Um, human condition, I think so. And one of the things you say, you know, what, what improvements are you seeing? And, um, you know, one of the most important things these days, especially around, um, uh, you know, things like, like mental health, people spending too much time, you know, in, in the business, you know, doing this properly is going to give you time back with your family, right? So it's going to give you the time to actually spend on the things that are important in life. Like you say, growing your business, doing all those kind of things, but equally, 
you know, spending time with your, your family and your loved ones. Because I used to, like I said, I it used to take me an entire weekend and I would just be, you know, out of seeing my family and friends for an entire weekend while I was trying to figure out my billing, if I could even figure it out. Yep. Um, you know, going from that to, you know, getting in at nine o'clock, clicking a few buttons and at 9.30, I was back home sitting on the sofa, spending time with my family. Hey, Amen. That, you know, absolutely. So Yeah. That's why I would spend Saturday mornings doing that just because yeah. I knew the phone was going to ring. I knew tickets weren't generally going to come in. So that I would spend Saturday morning, most of Saturday morning, every Saturday morning doing that before we went automated. Um, but yeah, that definitely, definitely saves time. So, all right. So let's, those of you who are tuning in live. Um, I should have, I forgot about our, our giveaways for this week. Um, a couple things I, I did want to it also, Chris said he has written a book himself uh psa profitability so let me throw that up on the screen so if you would like a free copy of chris's book put in the comments free psa book or psa book in the comments uh and the first person that posts that chris will send you a free copy of his psa profitability book physical copy of the book not just an ebook I, I I was going to say everyone except Ben Spector because he's probably got about a hundred of them already. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so, all right, let's get trucking on. So, like I said, I'll I'll watch the comments and we'll see who our lucky winner is. Uh, that probably, and again, you probably already have the book if you're watching this show um, and have spent any time and know Chris. Um, but anyway, we'll give away a free book to anybody who's uh, willing to go to to put in the comments and offer themselves up to take Chris's free offer. So let's talk about two. I'm going to switch gears on you and talk a little bit about uh, what made you switch from uh, go from MSP to working for a vendor to back doing consulting. What would you say is your learning process there or your big takeaway from that transition? Um, well, what made me do it, I think was, was more a case of, um, just everything we've spoken about, you know, the, the stresses of running a business, um, you, you know, not getting invoices out on time, well, until I, I put a PSA to in a place, but, um, you know, those kind of things and just, just got majorly stressed and burnt out. And, you know, you know, I, I then decided to sell the business at that point. Um, and I was actually going to not do a, a heck of a lot when I sold the business and I was approached by order task at the time who, um, you know, who had an opportunity available and, and offered me that position. So, um, and looking back on it now, it was, you know, one of the best decisions I ever made kind of going from, you know, the pains of running a business that we all go through to actually being employed and just, you know, having a salary come in every month. It, it was brilliant. It, you know, it gave me back my sanity. And um, again, also gave me back my weekends and, and time to actually spend with the family. So um, yeah, definitely one of the best, best moves I ever made. And then, um, being a consultant, what I'm doing now, I actually fell into that by, um, by accident. So a lot of people who know me, um, I've probably, you know, told the story a few times. Um, I, I never planned on actually going out and becoming a, a, a consultant for the PSA tool. When I, um, you know, when I left working, um, at Autotask, um, you know, one of the clients that, uh, that I used to do the consulting for when I worked there, um, you know, found out I was leaving and then asked what I was going to do when I left and I didn't kind of know. So he said, well, actually, we need some help. And, um, you know, we'd like to kind of take you on to help us, um, you know, get this product implemented and dialed in a little bit more. Um, and, and after that, I kind of figured, actually, there's probably a business in this some way. And, um, I, you know, he then referred me to somebody else and it just kind of snowballed from there. And here I am five years later. So it, it wasn't actually the plan to kind of um, become a consultant and go and do this thing. It just, just kind of happened by accident. Yep. Yeah, it was the same here. Once I, I sold my business in 2014, like I had zero plan. I just knew I was the same place. Uh, we had run, grown, scaled, sold the company. And like, I was tired. I was tired from, you know, grinding for 10 years. And I was all bought into that mentality, that hustle grind mentality. And once, uh, you know, age puts a little a few miles on you and you start writing checks, your body can't cash. That makes uh, your perception and your decision making a little bit different. Uh, at least it was for me. Um, 
but yeah, Ben Ben's gone the opposite route. Ben got out of the MSP. He's now working for a vendor and uh, with Zomentum. So he's going to take some 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 pitches for Zomentum. Um, but yeah, we're going to be doing a webinar with them next week. Uh, so I didn't have the link up, Ben. Uh, so I apologize. Uh, but definitely follow Ben. He's a, he actually posted the link to the webinar we're going to be doing next week uh, with Zomentum. So I'm excited about that. If I like that would be one of the tools that I would have had in my tech stack if I was an MSP today, because um, that part of it going the sales and marketing part to go from marketing to sales and having that automated that was a challenge for for us back when I was running my MSP and like tools like Zomentum weren't weren't quite there I think we were using what was the name of it um, Quosal. That was the one that, yeah, yeah, they got bought by ConnectWise. We were, we ended up using, we used QuoteWorks, then went to Quosal. But again, it wasn't a perfect solution. It was kind of hodgepodge. And then, you know, once ConnectWise bought them, that was around the time I was getting out anyway. But, but yeah, definitely mm -hmm. check out Zomentum. Um, and you probably have a little more experience with, with Z Zomentum as well. Um, but yeah, Robert, Robert said new car, new clients have to complete a go card list before anything goes into auto task onboarding or projects. So yeah. yes, that's mm -hmm. again, that's standard operating procedure. Um, so good, good for you, Robert. So, um, yeah. and, and actually just saying that, so yeah, I mean, I, I, um, you know, Ben and I know each other very, very well. Um, I, I actually do, do work with Cementum. It's one of the, the, the tools I kind of recommend to my customers. Um, you know, kind of sits on on the other end of of all the task or, or the beginning end, you know, and um, allows you to kind of manage your entire sales process all the way through, um, uh, you, you know, that that whole kind of opportunity stage all the way through from kind of you know lead to them becoming a customer, um, you know, and then and then it flows into the PSA so it can get billed for and um, and and all of that kind of stuff. So great product, you know, big shout out to them. Um, and yeah, I mean, if if there was a product around like that when I had my MSP business, um, you know, I, I would have snapped that up and I would have, you know, implemented that tool and and used that every day in my business. Yeah, and again, it's a, it's about picking the right tools and investing in the right places. Um, and I think you know that that's what makes the tools useful instead of having, like you said, a, a, you know, hundreds of dollars a month being auto build. And we're only use we're not using them or only using a, a small little piece of them. So, all right. I think we may have our winner of uh, your free book there, by the way. So we've got Daniel Lamas uh, from Mexico. Actually, I'll, yeah, Daniel. So if you excellent. So Daniel scores himself a free PSA profitability book. Um, Daniel, if you want to go ahead and, uh, a direct message me your um, mailing address, where to send that, and I'll get that to Chris, and we'll get that book straight away out to you for sure. So, um, but yes, uh, we did have a heavy hitting rock star join the show just now. So please help me welcome Mr. Pete Matheson to the show, <laughs> joining us from over on YouTube. Um, Again, another person to follow. Tremendous guy that uh, I've learned a ton from uh, on the video side. So, Pete, thanks for sh showing up to the show because that's a perfect seg segue where I don't want to talk about next is what we're doing right here, Chris. Um, you and I both attended Leap Into Live. It was a online conference. It was four days of like straight, just awesome content around live streaming. And you and I kind of got jumped in some of the chat rooms over there. Um, but l let's talk about the opportunity that you and I were talking before the show that I think is wide open right now for doing things just like this show and an MSP. I, like, I don't see anybody in the MSP space uh, doing anything. So, um, so we made Pete blush. So, mm. um, yeah. yeah, big, um, big shout out to, to Pete as well. I mean, him, him and I have, uh, um, you know, become kind of quite good friends over the last probably 18 months. Um, ne never actually met him face to face. So that's, uh, that's kind of on the, on, on the agenda. There's a lot of people in this industry I've spoken to <laughs> a, a lot and, and never actually met face to face. So, um, you know, that's, that's one of my goals still for this year at some point. Sorry, Pete, that, uh, I'm probably going to come and, uh, 
hunt you down and find you at some point and meet you face to face and take you for a beer. Um, it, yeah, and you know, just a great guy. Um, you know, and it's it's really because of him that I'm kind of getting into this whole streaming thing and starting to use eCam and and all of that kind of stuff. So yeah, big shout out to Pete. Yeah. So uh, it, Pete was actually the very first guest that I had on this show. Um, I have been doing trial and error. We started this show on April Fool's Day last year, like right as COVID started and like the tools and gear and all of that. I literally had a C920 webcam and a Blue Yeti mic. That was all I had. And I just started learning and trial and error, getting better a little bit each week. Um, but yeah, Pete and I messed around with doing some guest appearances. Like we messed for probably two or three weeks on just trying to make the stream go well. Um, but yeah, I had him on, you know, last year's he's been on a couple times, which is phenomenal. Um, but I think, you know, it, it opened up a new area that would have been amazing if I was an MSP. Like I have learned so much, not just about the tech, but I've been able to connect with people from around the world. And, you know, I get people that reach out that want to do business with us because they've watched my show. Um, you know, Daniel Lamas is going through my class right now, my 30 day growth map class, not because I sell anything on this show. Uh, but he's been, a, you know, watched the show for weeks and he's watched a lot of the replays. Uh, but it's not just about business. It's the community around that do what is necessary movement that has amazed me. Um, and I think, you know, that was a part that I that was one of the reasons I started this, because I remembered how I felt in 2008 when pretty much everything fell out. The economy fell out. I was four years into running an MSP. I had a four year old in, you know, at home and I'm like, okay, it was a very lonely place for me. So that's why I started this show as a way of just getting out and telling people, Hey, you don't have to be alone. I know you're struggling and it just having a, that's why I called it Wednesday afternoon business therapy. This has been therapy for me during COVID. And I know I have people reach out every single week after watching the show that tell me the same thing. Like this, they were having a bad week and they watched the show and I had a chance to make somebody's day a little bit better. And I think that was pretty cool. Um, but I think that's the opportunity that we have right now as MSPs. Like this platform has been amazing. Um, so you've, you've gotten into some, you know, video stuff because of Pete and whatnot, but what, what have you seen, you know, as a result of business and maybe professional, uh, you know, just acquaintances and, and friends that you've made just from doing video. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's been a game changer for me. I've, you know, I've started a, a, a YouTube channel where I'm able to, um, you know, give advice to people that, um, that I wouldn't have otherwise been able to give advice to, or, you know, being able to connect to people. And I get, um, you know, I've only got a few videos up on the, the YouTube channel at the moment. Um, but, you know, I have people contacting me almost every day saying, hey, I saw this video. It was really cool. It kind of really resonated with me. Um, you know, um, I'm, I'm, not the, I'm not the best at doing the videos. I kind of, you know, I'm not great in front of the camera. But I, I did a lot of these videos for, um, you know, to really help people to kind of address some of the, the questions that people are asking. And literally not a day goes by when, you know, I'm not getting some kind of comment from somebody saying, hey, I saw that video. I didn't know you could do that in the product or whatever the case might be. So, um, you know, I've made a lot of connections that way. Um, but I've also made a lot of friends in, in the industry. You know, Pete, Pete being one of them, um, you know, somebody who is so passionate about about video, um, somebody that I've, I've really learned from. And, um, you know, just every day I see the stuff that, that he does and, um, uh, you know, and it, and it really kind of, um, like you say, you know, it, it's, it's that therapy, right? It's, it's being able to kind of see what somebody else is doing and, and kind of go, Hey, actually that's, that's a fairly, you know, good thing to do. It's fairly, um, uh, you know, it's a fairly easy thing to do. And, um, yeah, so for me, it's, it's been really great kind of meeting people, meeting people like yourself, you know, I would never have met you if it hadn't been for video and hadn't been for, a common interest in in the Ecamm platform. So, 
yeah, yeah. it's just great. It's, it's been a been a great thing for me. It's been a fun ride, like I said, and you know. I would have probably never met Pete. I, I'm like you. I've never met Pete in person. Um, and Pete had great combined video with They Ask You Answer by Marcus Sheridan. That's gold dust. So definitely. Um, Marcus Sheridan's got some great stuff. He's a fellow Mountaineer, West Virginia Mountaineer too. So love his stuff. But mm-hmm. but that's the thing that I've that that I have seen, you know, as being a, and I've talked to, you know, quite a few people, Pete and I talked about it. This is an opportunity to be different. Everybody's, everybody's looking for a way to cut through the noise with sales and marketing. And everybody's looking for that shiny penny. What do I do next? Uh, You know, and, and just jumping from tactic to tactic, but like I would be all over this. And this is, this format is completely against my personality. Like I am an introvert. I keep to myself. I would be very comfortable just, you know, sitting behind, you know, behind the camera, not in front of it. Um, but it has been, it has been therapeutic for me to get out there to have conversations that I wouldn't normally have had. And, you know, it's an amazing thing. Business has come from it. And it wasn't, like I said, that wasn't my intent, but a lot of people have told me that, you know, the no like and trust factor that's what we all hear as far as sales and marketing being key. And this is the easiest way to do that, to get allow somebody to get to know you is by putting yourself out there. And like I said, the tools, I have gotten better with the tools. I was just, like I said, I was just like you, I, like it was bad. Um, I mean, Pete got on camera and like, just literally, I, I felt like inferior. So I think that's part of it. Um, but Pete, if you have any advice we could share for our guests to like, that's, that's what the advice that I would give. Mm-hmm. And if Anna and Fulgens are still attending as well, that's the advice that they would give. Just start. And the more you do it, like the easier it has gotten. Um, yeah. And I, I think as well doing this, you know, it's, it, it makes you a lot more professional in just everything else that you do. So, you know, this has helped me to level up just my zoom calls with customers, right? Because, you know, like you, I used to have a, you know, a, a crappy little webcam, um, you know, very blocky and, and what have you, um, you know, and, and, and on Pete's advice, I, you know, I bought a super duper Sony camera and, you know, the quality is, is so much better. Um, and I bet you everyone on this call probably thinks I'm actually sitting in my front room and I'm, I'm really not, this is actually a, a green screen behind me, believe it or not, that's actually just, um, putting this image on, but, you know, you, you go onto a, a, you know, a webinar or a Zoom call with customers, you know, with this kind of picture behind you and, uh, you know, and, and the quality of the camera. And that just immediately kind of elevates you straight away because, you know, everyone else is coming onto Zoom with kind of blocky um, blocky images or, you know, those, those um, you know, stupid Zoom backgrounds that kind of cut off half their arm when they move their arm and stuff like that. And so this kind of thing, just by meeting people like yourself and Pete and, you know, people that have really been able to help me to kind of level up, um, not just in uh, not getting out, just getting out of my comfort zone by doing this kind of thing, but actually leveling up, um, you know, just talking to customers on a day to day basis. I do that through zoom and just being able to do that much more professionally, um, with, with this kind of video. So, yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been awesome. So Robert, thanks for joining us today. Robert said he's got a scoot. We're happy we were able to hang out with you this evening. Um, Yeah, so Pete actually did have a comment to post as well. Let me pull that up on screen. So uh, Pete says he's an introvert too. If you can get over your fear. Wow, a video changed my life. Um, Yeah, that's it it definitely. It's done some amazing things for for me. Like I said, you know, professionally, uh, but also personally and that is something I really wasn't expecting. Like I wasn't expecting that, mm. that type of transformation. Um, but yeah, Chris, uh, Pete said, yeah, I can't wait for a Christmas party with a room full of introverts. So, um, <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's weird you say that. I mean, honestly, you know, I've spoken to Pete many times and, and I would never have said he, he was an introvert. You know, he's, I mean, you see the quality of stuff that he, that he's doing, um, you know, a great guy always kind of, um, willing to talk. And I think, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm probably the most introverted of, of all of us. Um, and, 
I, I think actually getting a room full of introverts of you, me and Pete in a room together, I think it'd be a, an, an awesome party actually, because even though we're introverts, I think, you know, ju just this kind of stuff is actually bringing us together and um, making us less introverted. And, you know, I think it'd actually be a pretty awesome party. The only thing that would scare me, and Pete won't, won't mind me saying this, is that hairstyle. Because, you know, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to meeting Pete, but that, uh, yeah, that, definitely, that mohawk, I think, is going to... Definitely unique. Uh, Pete, so if you're game for a, a live stream together, uh, let us know. Uh, I'd love to have Pete back on the show. Um, and that hopefully, like I said, we're, this is the first time we're using Restream Pairs, so we're able to go out to all of my social media channels and Chris's. Um, I would love to get Pete on and just stream that to all of our audiences uh, because I think we we serve a lot of the same you know people people just like us uh, other introverts other tech folks um, and I think you know it's time that we really get united to to move the industry forward um, I think it's a, it's a, a definite opportunity that we have and I think that I welcome 2022 because I've seen a lot of change this year. Um, I don't think we're done, quite done with the change, um, but I think it'll be an interesting industry going forward into 2022. Um, I'm I'm excited about the things that that are on the horizon, some of the new players that are coming into the market, and just our different way of doing business going forward and how we we serve our IT customers. So, all right. So he said he's in. So. Pete said he's Excellent. he's game, so we'll make that happen. Um, fortunately, you guys are in the t same time zone. That was the p challenge we had with uh, with um, Nigel from Tech Tribe. We were trying to get he, Richard, and I on a on a call together. But yeah, the time zone is crazy. Trying to get all three of us on there at once. Um, we yeah. might, might we might still make that happen. So one of us might be here, either up really late or up really early. But yeah, we'll see. Hey, so. we can. We can alternate the times though, right? So we can do it at kind of yeah. daytime, daytime for you and nighttime for us, and then we can we can kind of alternate that. Um, I mean, it's not it's not too late now. I know this thing started at kind of eight eight p.m. UK time, which yep, you know is 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 not late for us. So yeah, always happy to do it this time. Awesome. All right, man. Like I said, we've gone a little over the hour, so I I just want to be respectful of your time. I appreciate you being on on the show today and sharing your insights. Um, and I, I, I'm thankful for all that you do for the, the tech industry. And, you know, I, I'm glad that I finally was able to get, get together with you on a live stream, uh, to be able to help our friends, our, our, our fellow constituents here in the IT industry. So thanks. Thanks so much, Chris, for being on the show today. Excellent. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. It was good fun. And yeah, uh, yeah look forward to the next one. Awesome. So help me get, you know, thank uh, Chris for hanging out. We appreciate it, my friend. I will talk to you soon. And those of you who are watching this live, thank you so much for tuning into the show again this week. Uh, it was an interesting topic. We could probably could have gone and geeked out for, for hours and hours uh, about stuff. Uh, didn't want to end the show yet. Sorry. Hit the, hit the wrong button on the stream deck. Um, but yeah, thanks for hanging out with us this week. I always appreciate those of you who tune in live. And if you're watching this on the replay, um, share where you're from. Share whatever your number one takeaway with us was uh, so that I can pass that along to Chris. And those of you who are watching from Chris's channels, if I would love to be able to have you back on the show as well. Uh, but thanks for tuning in and watching the show. This has been a labor of love since I started this show, uh, but this is all about helping people in our industry, helping entrepreneurs uh, live a calm, purposeful life and being able to nurture community through live streaming. So I, I'm always appreciative for people like Pete hanging out with us, people like Chris, uh, people like Robert, uh, Nigel Gibbons, uh, or Nigel Moore rather, um, but yeah, I want to thank again our sponsor for this week, uh, the Tech Tribe, Nigel Moore, and all the great things he's doing over there. Uh, thanks for believing in us and being a, a strong advocate of the Do What Is Necessary movement. We're happy that uh, we were able to hang out with you uh, this week. So if you'd like to support what we're doing here and the free content that we're putting out, I run by caffeine, um, and I would so much appreciate it. If you just want to buy me a coffee, I, I would appreciate that. That goes a long way to us 
continuing to keep the lights on and keeping the content cranking out for good folks like yourself. Uh, but thanks again. I will see you on next week's show. And as I end every single live stream and have for the last year and a half, always stay humble and kind and always do what is necessary. I'll see you next week.